Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are my favorite street jackets. When I talk about street jackets, I'm using a general term for general purpose gear. This is for your city commuter, your retro custom guy, your standard motorcyclist. I always choose something casual when I ride street. You don't need skin tight leathers or Rambo's adventure kit to cruise around Montreal, so might as well get something that looks and feels like regular clothing. A riding shirt, a riding hoodie, a canvas coat, a windbreaker. All of this stuff looks correct and protects. First up, Lumberjack Attack. This is the Scorpion Covert flannel shirt, and it's just a standard cotton button down like the ones you buy at the Gap, right? Well, it's not really a button down. See, these snaps actually conceal a full zipper, which keeps the wind from billowing my shirt. And then on the inside, I have a Napoleon pocket, which you're not gonna find at the Gap, and I have a full lining of DuPont Kevlar, which you're definitely not gonna find at the Gap. So this is a flannel shirt with hidden slide protection. Even the seams conceal interior reinforcement stitches so they won't come apart when your ass hits asphalt. Despite all the safety stuff, my covert still feels comfy. It's perfect between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius because it's so light and airy, although it's downright chilly anywhere below that. I'm six foot three with a 39 inch chest wearing a size medium, which does fit great. However, I am wearing this without armor. So if I had bought the SAS tech pads that Scorpion sells separately, and I'd probably size up. Now, maybe I like the idea of the very casual covert, but I'm too cheap to buy armor separately. Then what? Then I'd buy the Joe Rocket Hardcore armored hoodie instead. Much like that flannel shirt, it's just a tinge over 150 bucks and it really blends in, but this time I get a full suite of CE approved armor, elbows, shoulders, and back. I have a love-hate relationship with Vault. On the one hand, these are about the most protective CE level one pads on the market. They're rock solid. And on the other hand, they're rock solid. Weird thing is, the vault pads aren't that uncomfortable in this hoodie. I think because it fits so loose and baggy, I barely feel the armor. Speaking of which, I'm still 6 foot 3 with a 39 inch chest, but this time the size medium is huge on me. I'm not gangster enough to pull off the baggy style, so I'd get a small next time. Let me diss this gangsta hoodie before we move on. Its abrasion resistance is shite. Yes, there are belt loops down here to keep it in place during a slide, but why bother when the material itself is a very weak cotton poly blend? Also, I think these silicon logos are lame. They remind me of the early 2000s for some reason. And finally, the hardcore hoodie has all the waterproof and windproof ability of a normal hoodie, which is to say you're gonna get soggy in the rain, you're gonna get chilly in the wind. Of course, it is nice and breezy for hot summer riding, so long as you keep moving. Next up, this is the Steel City, also from Joe Rocket. It has that same casual chameleon concept, but with a different style. A better style, in my opinion. We have that same CE level 1 armor throughout this jacket, we have those same belt loops down here to keep the Steel City from riding up, and we have the same button-down Trump Loy that we saw earlier in the covert flannel shirt. It's not actually a button-down, it just conceals a zipper, it's going to do a better job of keeping the wind out of this jacket. But this time we also get a waxed canvas outer shell that's going to stay water resistant so long as you keep waxing it. My wife tells me that layers are cool, so the Steel City must be cool. It has this thermal liner that's designed to look like a separate hoodie, probably because it is a separate hoodie that can actually be taken out and worn on its own. Not that you'd want to, the hoodie itself is very thin, it's devoid of any character, but it does sit comfortably underneath this jacket, and that looks cool. Allegedly. Also note that this collar snaps down, which is a nice motorcycling touch. Same with the bit of reflective piping across the back. Now if I had to pose a complaint to be that this Steel City has no ventilation whatsoever, also it fits quite short at the waist. But you're probably still thinking, hey, this is a whole lot more jacket than those previous two items. At least I hope you're thinking that, because the Steel City costs $270. Now, normally Icon would never make this list. I mean, street jackets are about being subtle so they look good on and off the bike, whereas Icon has all the subtlety of a big-breasted alien which I'm pretty sure is one of their helmet graphics. But Icon turned a new leaf when they turned out the Merc Stealth. It's not bright, it's not flashy. I mean, look at this tiny badge. I didn't know Icon could make logos that small. The rest of the Merc is equally chill. It's a flexible soft shell chassis, looks and feels just like an athletic jacket. Only the shoulders are done in ballistic nylon, but you'd hardly notice. In fact, I wish Icon actually put more of this stuff on the elbows and the lower back, because those are equally common sliding zones. I'm wearing a size medium and it fits just like an elastic band. I have elastic thumb loops to keep the sleeves down, I have elastic shock cords at the waist, elastic adjusters to pull the hood tight. You get the idea. 
The Merc's armor is elastic too, or viscoelastic anyway. It's this D3O stuff that is extremely soft and pliable against the body, but turns CE level 1 rigid in a crash. Very comfortable stuff this, and indeed the Merc is tied for the most comfortable armor jacket I've ever worn. For what it's worth, the jacket it ties with is my Icon 1000 base hawk, which was essentially the same thing with leather accents and an extra $130 on the price tag. So Icon ripped off their own base hawk jacket to make the Merc, and rather annoyingly they didn't fix the main problem I had with the base hawk, which is that there's absolutely no exhaust vents. And this jacket is needlessly stuffy, it's quite sad because the armpit vents are actually really good. However, Icon did make an improvement on the hood. The base hawk was notorious for slapping against your helmet at speed, but with the Merc, Icon's now given us a Velcro tab to roll the hood away. Nice. Now, I'm gonna close with some weather options. For hot days, I like the Alpine Stars Runner Air. It's a mesh jacket styled like a windbreaker. Ventilation is superb. Everything but the shoulders are done in mesh. Even the little cargo pockets, even the little armor pouches are done in mesh. Speaking of armor, I get CE level 1 pads in the shoulders and the elbows. The shoulders I like, the elbow pads are sort of overly chunky and not very comfortable, and the back pad in here is just a flimsy foamy which you'll need to upgrade. The mesh on this jacket is also surprisingly abrasion resistant. I mean, yeah, it's still mesh, but it's going to be cross-hatched and it's going to be double-layered, so it slides pretty well. Mainly I love the Runner Air because it's so casual. Ride into town, hop off the bike, and even Anthony from Revzilla won't be able to tell you're a motorcyclist. But that doesn't mean A-Star's actually skimped on the Moto setup. I still get a waterproof Napoleon pocket with a pass-through port. I have a hood that can be strapped down for riding. I get loads of reflectivity front and back, plus a very bright zipper. I want to mention that the zipper actually goes all the way up, but I'm still not sure how that's useful. The size is a medium and the price is $250 which is a tad high, but the Runner Air does come with a complimentary rideout collection carabiner. How do you like the value now? Of course, if you want value, my pick for wet weather is better. This is the Scott Sport DP waterproof jacket. It is insanely light, and it has everything. The membrane is Dryosphere, waterproof and breathable like Gore-Tex, only unlike Gore-Tex, it's not gonna last forever. Still very good though. And then on the inside, I have a full removable thermal liner plus a zipper attachment down at the bottom for hooking up to pants. It's the usual smattering of pockets plus little niceties like this magnetic collar and spring-loaded zippers. Protection punches above its price tag too. The shell is high denier polyamid, which slides very well. The shoulders and the elbows are CE level one SAS tech armor. It's viscoelastic stuff just like D3O, only slightly less comfortable in my opinion. The back protector pocket is empty, but there's lots of reflectivity on this jacket. Here, 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 here. It's perfect for getting seen on dull rainy days. So the Sport DP is a $350 rain jacket that only costs $250. And it's not that bad in warm weather either. Scott utilized lightweight taffeta in this design. So if you have the bicep vents open and you take the thermal liner out, the jacket's decently breathable. Now I'm six foot three with a 39 inch chest, very comfortable in this size medium. Yes, this is the most motorcycle-ish street jacket on my list, but it's still slim, it's stylish, and it's not totally lame off the bike. And that's it for my favorite street jackets. Thanks for watching.